Thank you for everybody for joining this session of LinkedIn Live. Today, we're going to be talking about what is Microsoft 365 Copilot. My name is Joseph Flynn. I'm a Director of Distinguished Engineer over Insights Modern Workplace Practice, and I'm joined by Anna Donnelly. Anna, would you like to introduce yourself? Certainly. Uh, my name is Anna Donnelly. I am a services product manager in the modern workspace uh, and have been, like you, Joe, living and breathing and sleeping and eating Copilot <laughs> lately. Uh, this is a good conversation to have right now. Yeah, I, I think the AI topic is on everybody's mind. And like you said, I think everybody, including many people at Insight, are living this AI conversation every day. Um, so like, let's start the conversation like very early high level, what would you, how would you explain what Microsoft 365 Copilot is? Well, so that's interesting. I think the first thing that tends to come up with clients is what it isn't, because there are so many different AI solutions, especially in the Microsoft space. If you look at, um, you know, either OpenAI and some of the, the investments and mergers and things that Microsoft has done in ChatGPT. And then now we have Bing Chat, we have Bing Chat Enterprise, there's Azure AI Cognitive Services, there's a different co-pilot for pretty much everything uh, that that has some kind of an end user facing workload in, in uh, Microsoft world. Um, but the co-pilot that we're talking about today, I think is really going to be more the Microsoft 365 co-pilot, right? So there's all of these other things that exist out there, but Microsoft 365 Copilot to me um, is really having an assistant with you uh, in the productivity applications that are tied to Microsoft 365. That's the best way that I would describe it. I like your description better, which I won't steal your thunder and I'll let you explain <laughs> right now, but I would call it ha more like having an intern, right? A new intern. So they can do it can just do things for you you got to check its work um but you know by and large it'll get you a little bit of the way there uh with a minimal amount of effort so uh and i won't steal yours you, i like your description a lot well so. i use my description simply because we, we travel a lot and i always say to people if you're on an airplane you have co-pilot and you have autopilot right autopilot's going to fly the plane for you and there's going to be some checks and balances but the co-pilot is there to help the pilot fly the plane and that's how I see Microsoft 365 Copilot is it's there to help you do more. It's there to help you not start from the ground zero. Hopefully, based on what you ask and the information you request, it gets you a lot further along on what your end game is in that sense. But that's our that's our understandings. And I'd like to even dig in a little further. You and I are on a lot of customer conversations, and there's four main AI conversations that come up. Right. And I want to want you want your explanation because I do like your explanation on it. We have Chat GPT, which everybody has known for the mm -hmm. past year. We have Bing Chat Enterprise, which is released in August. We have the open AI cognitive services, like you said, from an Azure side. And now we have Microsoft 365 Copilot. Mm -hmm. What's the easiest way to give people an understanding of what are the key differences between those? Because most people are thinking, well, I have Bing Chat Enterprise, which is included in E3 now. Um, mm -hmm. What is that different versus if I have my users use ChatGBT, and hopefully most companies don't just send their users to ChatGBT uh, versus the Microsoft 365 and the other? Well, firstly, I would recommend to anyone who has not used uh, Bing Chat Enterprise, or even if you know you you don't have access to it, it's something that you can go to Bing and on your you know personal device or whatever it is and take a look. Bing Chat Enterprise is really to have uh, it is really a way to have Chat GPT, what we would think of as Chat GPT, um, within uh, your enterprise without your data getting out, right? So it's relatively basic. Um, you would interact with it in the same way that you you interact with uh, pretty much any AI solution that's available publicly. Um, it even has uh, you know the capability for image generation using Dolly three, some I think. Uh, so it it uh, is the difference being that if your employees are interacting with it, none of the information that they are feeding it is going out into the large language model in the ether, right? So it's all staying within uh, your organization. And once they prompt it, it goes away. Um, and that really, to me, is the place to begin if you're, you know, so we'll talk a little bit about the requirements for Microsoft 365 Copilot, uh, but there definitely are some requirements in order to get the licensing today. And there is going to be 
uh, even after November 1st. So if you're an organization that doesn't have access to it, I would say, you know, dipping your toe into the AI water in a relatively safe way would be um, to go with Bing Chat Enterprise. It's also something that's that's relatively minimal effort, right? Especially if you have that license. If you don't have a Microsoft 365 E3 or E5 license, if you are an O license, you can purchase that uh, for a per user per month cost. But that's the kind of public version. And then once we get into the Azure Cognitive Services and then uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot, because we are we like to use analogies here. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the best analogy that I can come up with with the difference between uh, you know what you're developing in Azure Cognitive Services versus um, you know what is available to you in, in Microsoft 365 Copilot would be if you were to hire a chef, uh, a private chef to have you know, come on in to my home. This is exactly what I want. Uh, it, they go and they get the ingredients for you. Everything kind of has to be done from scratch, but it is exactly what you need and exactly what you want at the time, right? On the other side of that is Microsoft 365 Copilot, which is going to feed you. <laughs> um, but you get to pick from the menu, right? So you get the takeout version. Uh, you know, you can order your pizza and maybe you can have it without mushrooms or uh, you can get the gluten-free pizza or whatever it is, but you still have to operate within the boundaries of what is available to you, or you have to, you know, operate within the boundaries of what Microsoft 365 Copilot is capable of. So um, you know, it's really kind of the difference between the customized experience, you are developing your solution from scratch. A lot of times it has a specific purpose, right? So I have the private chef in my home for the party, right? Um, or I am developing this, you know, specifically so that uh, people can interact with my line of business solutions. Um, whereas Microsoft 365 Copilot, again, it's your Copilot, it's your assistant, it's your intern. Um, they're there to kind of help you along in your day. So. Oh, well said. And I think if I look at the OpenAI stuff, similar to even how us at Insight are using these technologies, uh, we're feeding OpenAI with a lot of our company data to learn how we do things. Uh, across right, 11 to 13,000 people, everyone does does it differently, but there are commonalities. And the OpenAI service is helping us understand what those commonalities are to help streamline, help more, help be efficient. Where the Microsoft 365 Copilot in our environment is leveraging the data that we do day in and day out within the Microsoft environment only, right? Right now, it's a Microsoft environment only. Um, so there are benefits. But on the flip side, if I look at just to extend more on the use cases of Copilot, since we love our analogies, right? I always say, if you think back in the 90s, when I started my career, and uh, it, thinking that far back is pretty funny to think about. But I mean, if I try to do scripts, if I want to do anything else, I always ask someone, I always search. I very seldom ever tried to create anything from scratch. Even internal today, when we talk about decks, we do a ton of customer presentations uh, or partner presentations. And it's everyone has done so much here. There's so many great people that it's easier to take a deck, modify it for what you want, than trying to do from scratch. And that's Another analogy, how I think of Copilot is let it mm -hmm. get, ask it a question, let it give you a great starting point that you can tweak and ultimately drive to what you want a lot faster, a lot more efficient, save you time, be more productive in the day is the overall goal, right? Yeah, I, I like the, the the thing that they tell my my kid who's in college this first year, they said, sure, you can use ChatGPT, but understand that that's the baseline for what we would expect. Uh, whatever you do, your grade is going to be based on what's what's better than Chat <laughs> GPT. Um, so, and because it really is kind of the the baseline. Starting point. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, I'm I'm I, I'm with you there. I I would never start any code from scratch, <laughs> especially back in the well, 90s. A lot of people still do. But yeah. Now let's dig into 365 Copilot. What are you seeing uh, from a customer demand, or even being in the in the program today, like some of the capabilities and benefits that Copilot can bring. Like why would a customer knowing, let's say it is $30 per month per user. So it's not cheap, it is an investment. So there's some gotchas that customers have to think about. Um, capabilities and value, where you, would you drive that type of conversation for customers? Yeah, well, I mean, there's been so much marketing uh, around this. Microsoft has done a really good job of creating demand for all of us partners. Um, in fact, I don't, 
know that I have ever seen this kind of uh, interest in any product that Microsoft has put out. It's a little bit refreshing. Uh, it is also a little bit stressful. stressful. <laughs> um, but it's uh, they've done a really good job of of helping you know folks understand what it what the the goals are. That said, it still is in its uh, infancy, and there are some things that it does really really well. Um, and my favorite thing that it does is summarize meetings. It does a really good job of summarizing meetings. In a lot of ways, it's a little bit scary. I mean, certainly for how we've kind of been conditioned to think about AI um, and, you know, the machine comes back and it tells you exactly what happened. Uh, my other favorite thing to ask Copilot to do, actually, I have I have three favorite things. So it's asking about the the recap for the meeting, right? So if I'm late, I can say, catch me up on, on what happened. Uh, if I miss the meeting altogether, I can ask it for the, for a summary. You can dig into it a little bit further. It will tell you the exact places in the, in the transcript, transcript where it's getting that information from. Um, so it really gives you a good way to, for me, to be able to focus on the conversation instead of having to focus on, am I taking the right notes, right? Um, or, you know, am I, am I just looking at this one thing and all these other things are being said over here? So the summary is great. The other two things that I love doing are asking the mood of the meeting, um, which it does a really good. Yeah, you're smiling because we've had fun with this, um, <laughs> which it does a really uh, accurate job of describing exactly what it is that's going on and understand that whatever it is that you're looking at in Copilot. So if um, you know, the mood of the meeting is a little bit intense. You're the only person who's seeing that summary. Uh, so you're, you're the person who's asking for that. So it's not as though it's showing everybody that, um, you know, we're all very friendly or perhaps, you know, somebody, in fact, it identified that someone was not feeling well and that every, that, and it was concerned uh, that this person had a cough that wouldn't go away. Um, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's really very accurate. It's interesting to see. Uh, and then the last one that I really like that is also coming out as part of a Teams premium fe feature is you can ask it how you can improve your communication skills based on that meeting, right? Um, so I, that one is very interesting. Uh, it definitely gives you some uh, like real feedback, right? Maybe you talked a little too much. <laughs> That's what it says a lot to me. <laughs> let other people, right? I'm doing a lot of presentations and things all the time, but um, it does give good feedback. So those three are the things that I think you can get immediate value from. Uh, Copilot in in Teams, so the, the business chat in Teams is amazing as well. Like it, it does a really good job of taking the information that is in your environment and providing responses. So I can do things like ask, you know, who is the expert in, um, you know, Azure cloud storage in my organization, and it's going to give me some some recommendations, and it's relatively accurate. It will also um, summarize things, like if I ask it about products in our environment, it does a really good job of summarizing that. It takes information that's kind of based on the, the relevant things that you are doing, and then all of the other things that exist in your environment to, to provide a response. So those things, for me, have been super useful. Um, like, you know, I'm going to, I'll ask you, <laughs> uh, I'll ask you the same question, at least, you know, oh, as right. we have been using it, uh, what's been, you know, your kind of favorite features? I think, I agree with you. I think if I'm looking at use cases and customer environments where it's an immediate impact and ROI, mm -hmm. if, a, if there's a customer out there that has project managers or anyone managing some, something related to a project or task, uh, the recap, the listing of tasks, listing of assignments and due dates from a team's meeting. I mean, just from our thing, we do a lot of consulting services. So for our product managers, project managers to take a meeting, automatically summarize it, automatically list deadlines, dates, just mm -hmm. not just from the recap alone. Uh, obviously, they can modify it. Like I always we I said, Copilot is you're not just take copying and pasting what Copilot says, but it's an easy recap, especially sending it back to a customer, putting it into another program as far as follow up purposes and and any task related like that. It, it is crazy how accurate it works. And as far as the mood goes, I do get a kick out of that because it's pretty, it is pretty accurate in that sense on how well it works. 
I think the other thing I like about it is from an email perspective, I tend to get thrown in on strings of email where I'm probably like the 50th piece of that email or by the time it gets to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so being able to summarize, being able to do quick responses on that side, or even taking like a PowerPoint document and summarizing it into a Word document if I need to send it a quick snippet to a customer in email or just a, a brief summary to a customer on what this document is or what this PowerPoint is. I think it does provide great value there. And it saves me a ton of time. Just if I had to go through 50 um, strings of email just to catch up on something, it's going to take me way more than a minute of saying, please summarize this for me. Uh, Mm -hmm. So I can get quicker to the response, get quicker to the resolution, ultimately move on to the next task. So 100% agree on where the value is. I think the other value that I see on why one way do co-pilot over open AI in this sense is if your data is already in the Microsoft Cloud, you have, I always say about the Microsoft Cloud is the ecosystem approach, what works so well, is once you're in that ecosystem, it's just everything talks to everything, your applications work well together, you, you just get that great user experience. And I think Copilot drives that because now it's pulling it into all the apps that everyone's using on a day-to-day basis. I'm not leaving Word to go to a Copilot app to try to do something. I'm not leaving Excel or Teams. It's built into every single app. Ultimately, and what I can type in one thing, I could potentially get similar responses uh, in other applications too within the same suite of products. I, mm-hmm. I think the ecosystem approach definitely rings a bell for me as far as the experience and why would one do co-pilot from an AI perspective using their Microsoft data. Yeah, I I think of the benefits of co-pilot over you know, developing your own solution is the same as the benefit of actually using Copilot is it's going to get you like 70% of the way there. Whereas if you're developing your own solution, you've got to feed it the data, you have to connect things and tell it, you know, you have to, you have to train it. Whereas this already has access. Um, and with some of the extensibility scenarios and solutions and those, those things to me down the road, um, because we are again, kind of in the, the beginning of this, I feel like organizations really need to understand what it means to them before they go kind of diving into the extensibility scenarios. But what I mean by that uh, ultimately is you know, being able to not just have the information go one way, um, but you can actually develop uh, solutions using um, easy, low code, no code, open AI solutions that you plug right into uh, Copilot and you can have your folks interact with. So you can have that more kind of customized experience um, that again, is something that, you know, you can develop with, with limited kind of effort and, and, and now, and know how, I guess, if compare it, when you compare it to, to, you know, starting from scratch, like in an Azure environment or anything that you're doing with open AI. Um, so I do think that, that figuring out those use cases just in general, for organizations is going to be really important is that's where they're going to drive return on investment. And I think that everybody is going to be looking for ROI big time. Well, you uh, have, yeah, I think at the $30 per month per user, you got to prove some mm-hmm. ROI. To, I mean, most C-level uh, resources are going to be like, where's the hard and soft ROI, right? Because the hard part is you're, you're going to put out a lot for the licensing. So you got to see immediate impact from an end user perspective, from a productivity side or efficiency side. And a lot of times those are hard to prove but just look at the few examples we gave from a project manager to the summarization to emails to communication. It streamlines that. So definitely, just for my own purposes, it helps me be more productive. So if I think of the few minutes I save per day, or shall I say the few minutes or or time I can do more over the course of, let's say, 20 business days in a month that I'm actually working. I wish it was only that. Um, but yeah, you're definitely getting more value than $30, as long as you have the right use cases in mind. Well, I like what you say. Uh... A dollar a day, right? right. Save a dollar to, be a, right. to be a little bit more productive, I'd feel like I would pay that out of my own pocket. Um, just saying. <laughs> um, if I, uh, you know, if I never had to take another note myself again, that's worth a dollar a day. Well worth it. Exactly. Especially <laughs> now how many meetings so, are on a day. Yes. Yeah. Not and I'm not a good note taker. So <laughs> it's, yeah, it's definitely helped. That part has definitely helped me uh, in the recent past for sure. Now let's shift into how should companies or what should companies think about to prepare for this? So we do know it's being released November 1st. uh, So it's GA. Um, Don't get me wrong. Companies can probably turn around and buy it. 
hoping to get the value out of it. Uh, money companies, I would hope, right, or do their due diligence to determine, I'm not going to license everybody most, most times, um, but I need to figure out what are my best use cases? Where am I going to get the most value for this licensing? So how do companies prepare for this to be released and available in their environment? Yeah, so the first thing that usually comes up when I've been talking to clients about this is, you know, security, privacy, compliance. Um, and that's not, you know, it's an entire, it's a completely legitimate concern. So it's a technical ex exercise, certainly, um, to identify where your risks might be. But then it is also an end user education uh, exercise as well, because in this case, these these folks were sharing things with the public link, right? Within everyone and insight can can share. So dealing with the concerns, right? You have to kind of address it from a business standpoint and a technical standpoint. You have to look at you know your governance, your adoption, um, how folks are interacting with your uh, IT department is going to be a lot more important coming up here, again, because you also want to figure out those use cases from an ROI perspective. And then on the other side of that, certainly the technical pieces um, that are related to privacy and compliance uh, to your data estate, are you going to connect third party sources, which again, I don't know that we've mentioned yet, but you can connect uh, uh, third party to the Microsoft Graph using uh, graph connectors that are either already available to you and published by Microsoft or published by um, other folks in the Microsoft ecosystem, or you can create custom connectors. So there are things that you kind of have to determine, um, you know, what other use cases, what else do you want to get out of this? It's the same thing with with plugins, which again, are solutions that are built on Copilot. Um, within the Microsoft e ecosystem, you have to know, understand, you know, where you're going with these things. So there's the technical side, there's the business side, uh, and there's there's quite a bit that's, that's in there uh, under those two categories that I think um, folks should deal with. Now, that's not to say that it's like a super complicated thing, right? Um, it's, it's just being aware of what your risks are and how to manage them. Um, these are things that should be going on in your environment uh, anyway. You know, I, I tell our sellers keep asking me, uh, are, you, are we ready to deliver on Microsoft 365 Copilot? Are our people ready to deliver? And honestly, these are things that the readiness components are things that we've been doing for clients for, for years and years, right? I mean, it's migration, it's setting up uh, Microsoft 365 security, so Intrapriva. Purview, purview is a big piece of it for organizations who are worried about uh, the content that's in their organization. Um, so it's all stuff that we've been doing already, adoption, but uh, you know, it's becoming a little bit clearer why it's important to deal with technical debt now uh, in the in the AI world. But you know, I feel like there's a lot more than that. There are prerequisites that maybe you want to talk about what some of those things are before we even, you know, get to turning Copilot on in your environment. I know there are things that we need to get, we need to do, right? Yeah, I think the biggest thing customers need to understand to do is, you, I mean, the recommendation and it may even be a requirement is you need to be 50% adopted of the Microsoft technologies. And what we mean by technologies is. Exchange Online, OneDrive, SharePoint, Teams, Word, Office, all the tools that Copilot's going to use to gather that data and evaluate the data to return back to you. Um, if you're less than 50% adopted of those services, you're, you're not going to get the value. So you have to take that into account. You have to be migrated. You have to be using the cloud. You have to be leveraging, obviously, own the M365 SKU, the Microsoft 365 SKU, because that is a requirement. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's the key thing to understand is you have to be using these technologies to get the value out of the technologies. Mm -hmm. Now, I think from a security standpoint, I want to touch on one thing with you. One thing I noticed from using it, and I was actually thought it was quite clever, is the built-in guardrails that it has with it. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I mean, I'm, we're pushing it to the extent I'm, I'm typing in everything I can to see, making mm -hmm. sure everything is good. Um, so asking things like salary or anything, I mean, automatically it comes back and says it's not allowed to capture that type of data. So there's good that there's barriers put into it. I think the other aspect is security from how does it handle the data? 
So like for instance, we mentioned chat GPT, you type something that goes out to the web, it helps with the, the public large language model. But with the Microsoft 365 Copilot, if I ask it a question, it's going to search and use the context of me on what I have access to, which is amazing because it helps start that security. Like no different than when we say Copilot is not is helping you not start from ground zero. The fact that it's using your credentials, it's using your security context, it's already above right ground zero on how it's going to use the data, how it's going to search the data. If I don't have access to something, then it's not going to bring it back, which is really nice. Uh, where if you take the other pieces, open AI or other things, you got to add in the additional layers of security just so what users can have access to what data. So it does make that a little easier in that sense. But I agree and into what you said, the security aspects of who has access to what, how they access it. You really got to start thinking about how you share things internally. So mm -hmm. you want to start more sharing specifically to people or specifically to groups, not do what those shares were share with any employee within the company type of thing. So customers have to actually think about those things. Um, from yeah. a data estate perspective, now you mentioned, I wanted to jump back here where you said, oh, if I ask it specific technologies, it knows who the subject matter expert is. That mm -hmm. doesn't come easy. Like, let's be honest. Like, yeah. Like, Data estate for most companies, the data hygiene for most companies is not very good. Uh, and if it is, kudos any company out there because it's really mature uh, for most customers. But to get something like what you said, what is required for that? So, I mean, there are a lot of things. There's a lot of different things that I've seen because, again, we're we're pushing it, right? We're trying to figure out where, <laughs> where the... <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I'm good at breaking things it's just in general. Um, but there are definitely things that come back with a lot more accuracy than others. And I'm noticing that uh, if it is something that is promoted to Viva Topics, so um, if you're not familiar with what Viva Topics is, uh, it's really the Microsoft's kind of first, well, not first, there's been a lot of AI solutions, but um, it is within the Viva suite looking at your content and, and taking advantage of the semantic index, which is part of what uh, Copilot has provided us, which is an improved uh, search, an improved search index, returns results that are a lot more accurate. Perhaps this is something that you've noticed because it is something that's released. But, um, you know, if you are using Viva Topics, it's looking at the things that are most relevant to your organization already and you can publish those topics and you know provide a lot richer experience more information that has been kind of validated in your environment so and that includes things like i am a subject matter expert in this so i'm finding in some cases it's returning information that was like in chats so and so said they can take care of this right so i asked someone in an email i asked someone in a chat who does this and then it'll return that however if it's something that's published as part of Viva Topics, um, it is, you know, considered the official answer. It seems to be bubbling those things up to the top. Uh, I've also heard that, you know, pretty much across the the, the Viva suite, um, that you know, it's it's providing some sort of indexing where it is where it is giving you kind of the official answer, and it's prioritizing those things over so and so said in the chat that they that they could do this. Yeah, I guess if you look at Viva Connections is, is a internal intranet page, so you hope it's curated data. Mm -hmm. uh, Viva Topics, same thing. It's it's pages that are found to be common or used a lot, keywords, topics. And then once you can publish these topics to be approved, curated, who are the right people, what's the right uh, documents and other types of information. So once it's approved and considered valid or mm -hmm. truth, then I absolutely right. That would be information I would want to be used. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Viva Topics is in so many ways helps to my mind helps organizations get really a handle on the data out there and what's actually important. And it, it is a really good conversation to have as we are talking about uh, Copilot as well for organizations who don't have access to Copilot, because I, I guess that's probably the, the last thing we're going to cover here. But for organizations that don't have access to Copilot, um, you know, that's something that you can do today uh, and take a look at the results and see kind of how useful those things are uh, within from an you know, as far as an AI solution goes, uh, it, it's it's a really great place to start. 
So, you know, just to wrap it up, can you kind of explain the two paths that we're trying to help customers with Copilot uh, specifically to our workshop and readiness on how they can engage with Insight to help them move the journey forward? Yeah, so we have um, a couple of different things that we can do to kind of get you started. The first would be the workshop, and that really is um, about kind of understanding what Microsoft 365 Copilot Pilot is, because again, like we've been talking about this for a half hour or so, we could probably talk another two hours <laughs> about the stuff uh, that we've seen and the things that are relevant. I mean, the 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 readiness conversation and some of the things that we've we've talked about. I mean, we can go pretty deep uh, with a lot of organizations in general. I you know I will schedule 45 minutes, 60 minutes, and it ends up going 90 minutes. And can we schedule another conversation? Right, if you're just talking about what is Copilot. So the workshop uh, is really meant to help introduce folks to it, understand the, you know, what Microsoft always calls the art of the possible. So what really is possible with uh, Microsoft 365 Copilot, what it means to your organization. So we will have the first kind of discussions about what are those use cases that you might focus on that you're going to get the most return on investment in the least amount of time when you implement Copilot. Um, and then we'll go through some readiness, uh, you know, activities that really are kind of at the base level that give us another step to, you know, where do we really need to focus in your organization? So um, we have a little bit of a readiness evaluation. It's about two days. Um, it's the, the actual workshop is anywhere from four to eight hours, depending on what your organization needs. Um, and we'll give you a, a report out on kind of here are the things that you need to pay attention to. And once you get there, we have an offering that's specific to readiness, uh, which is we call the readiness fast start um, because we do dive a little bit more deeply into all of the things that we've been discussing. And by a little bit more, I mean, um, we we go through and we look at um, a risk assessment of, you know, kind of the data and the content in your, your uh, environment just to make sure, you know, these are the things that you really need to deal with. Uh, we take a look at your your data estate. So what are you doing about sharing? Um, what policies do you have in place today? What governance do you have in place today? What are our recommendations from where you are at from a, an adoption perspective? What are our recommendations to kind of get you to a place where you're going to be able to support this? Because understand, I said this about Microsoft 365 since the beginning, but more than ever, Copilot is changing and changing and changing and changing. Like every week there is a big list of things um, that have changed. It's going to be really difficult to get return on investment if you're not preparing end users to continuously adopt, adopt and be kind of excited about what's come what's coming and what they can do. And that is, you know, where we help our clients address exactly what it is that they need to do to build that kind of excitement in their organization and get people to kind of be continuous adopters of technology. So the readiness is kind of the the next step. That's three weeks um, where we can, again, get you up and running pretty quickly. We can get you through to a pilot, make some recommendations there as well. Uh, and of course, you know, all of our services, again, these are things that we've been doing. Um, for many, many, many years. <laughs> so let us get you out of technical debt. Um, you know, let it, let us move you forward with your with your cloud uh, environment and kind of get you to where you need to be so you can continuously adopt this all this new cool stuff because it is really cool. I've had some fun. I I have a fun job anyway, Joe. And I'm not just saying that because you're my boss. Um, <laughs> but but I get to play with a lot of new stuff. Um, and lately, this stuff is really interesting. It's not just looking at an admin console. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> so thanks no, no. for that. <laughs> so no, Anna, cool. thank you. I love having these conversations because uh, a lot of time, these conversations are very frank, right? I mean, we tell it, we ultimately tell it how it is, tell about our experiences. But thank you for joining me today on uh, this LinkedIn Live, just talking about Microsoft 365 Copilot. And if anybody watching this has any questions, uh, they want to possibly talk to us or reach out how we can help you understand what is Microsoft 365 Copilot, how you can gain value in your business, those use cases, like Anna mentioned, the workshop, the readiness. Hit us up on insight.com. Glad to talk with you and hopefully help you through your journey of adopting and purchasing Microsoft 365 Copilot. Yeah. Thank you and have a great day. Thanks. Thanks for joining.